Hi everyone, can you hear me? Okay, uh, thanks for uh, coming. Um, AWE is a great conference to attend. I've been attending this conference for like almost like seven years, and uh, I'm happy to announce that like uh, Intuito Surgical, the company that I work for, is one of the sponsor of this conference. And uh, thanks AWE for giving me this opportunity to talk about uh, today's uh, presentation. Okay, so we have the slides here. So um, today's uh, my presentation is on Intuito XR for digital surgery. I'll touch on like what is intuitiveness, why it is important, and then how the XR is uh, being very crucial in the surgery, what's its role in the surgery. And then um, I'll also take you through like uh, how the intuitive XR is applied for the digital surgery. So before I uh, get into the details, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Goind Payawla. Um, I work at Intuitive Surgical as a managing principal. Let's see if I can advance the slides. So I work at uh, Intuitive Surgical as senior managing principal. I work at the Future Forward group. Uh, I'm leading an uh, uh, XR research group. Uh, we are involved in like uh, exploring and then like building a novel XR applications. So I have a degree, master's degree in robotics and mechatronics. Uh, I've been in this uh, medtech space for like last 25 years, uh, working on like software, hardware, uh, robotic systems, and in the digital surgery space. Uh, if you look at like uh, the evolution of the surgery, and then like even if you go uh, before that surgery, uh, before 20th century, uh, people, uh, they were not able to celebrate like even their 14th birthday because like a lot of people used to die because they don't have an access to the healthcare or like you know the healthcare is not that effective or it's not evolved but if you look at like uh, the surgery in general it evolved uh, over a period of time and then we will also look at like how the surgery has evolved and then like how the surgeon and then the patient interactions are evolved uh, what you see in this slide is the surgeon is performing in the open surgery uh, the surgeon is interacting directly with the patient. So they're touching the patient, they're seeing directly uh, into the patient, and then uh, they're using their hands to perform the surgery. So one of the uh, complications of this surgery is that like it's an, uh, a big incision has to be made to access the internal parts of the body. And because of that big incisions, a lot of blood loss, a lot of recovery time, and then like because of that, uh, uh, a lot of like readmission rates and whatnot. So these are the complications of this open surgery. And then, uh, thanks to the uh, uh, the innovation in the endoscopes and then like all these cameras. So uh, what I'm showing here is then laparoscopic surgery. In the laparoscopic surgery, the surgeon instead of seeing into the patient, like so they are they are seeing through the endoscope and then they are looking at the monitor, two uh, D monitor. And then, like uh, instead of like uh, uh, touching the patient, and then like uh, they are using this uh, laparoscopic instruments. So, which is when you compare with the open surgery, the laparoscopic surgery is like minimally invasive, so much better uh, when compared to the open surgery. But if you look at like the instruments, uh, they are using these chopsticks kinds of instruments, and then like uh, because they are uh, of the fulcrum effect, it's not intuitive. In fact, it's counterintuitive. So what I mean by that is like when you move the instrument to the right, the tip of the instrument moves to the left. If you want to move to the up, you need to move down. So this counterintuitiveness is one of the uh, uh, main challenge. And also like uh, uh, because of this one, there's a lot of learning curve. And then like you also see that like they're looking um, at the monitor, which is not immersive, and then they're not seeing 3D. Uh, can you we bring back this uh, intuitiveness and then can we still get the benefits of like uh, minimally invasive surgery? So for over 25 years, Intuitive has innovated and then brought to market disruptive technology that has raised the bar of what physicians and then patients can expect in surgery. Okay, so let me show you that uh, how we are addressing this one. Uh, most of you might have seen like uh, the Devin C uh, robotic system, 
what you see here is a dependency console, which is a great example of like VR. So here the surgeon puts their head into the console. What they see is 3D uh, immersive um, uh, um, images uh, inside the patient body through the endoscope. They're interacting with those controllers. And then like because you introduce the computer in between the, uh, the surgeon and in the patient, now you can map like your motion to an intuitive motion. So if you move your hands to the right, the tip of the instrument moves to the right. If you move to the left, you can, uh, the instruments will follow you. So that's what I mean by the intuitiveness. And then like I've been giving this, uh, I've been working at Intuitive for like last 15 years. I gave like hundreds and uh, thousands of demos. And every single time like I ask somebody to sit at the console and then like um, uh, uh, interact with the robot, the first thing they, they tell me uh, coming out of the console is that like it feels intuitive, it's immersive, okay? I know like I cannot show the demos here, but uh, uh, I put a lot of uh, uh, videos here. So let me play the videos and then like uh, let me show you the how XR is being used and then like uh, uh, let me show you the Devon C XI uh, video. So we talked about uh, intuitiveness. Let's talk about like uh, XR, which is for like an uh, umbrella term for like uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, and then like mixed reality. So what is uh, uh, extended reality mediation? Extending and enhancing the skills of the surgeon and then the care team. So let me walk you through like how we are using the virtual reality, uh, mixed reality, and then the augmented rea reality uh, for the surgery. So what you see on the left side of the image is the surgeon puts their head into the console, they look uh, to the endoscope, they see a uh, high quality HD 3D definition video and uh, which is coming at like 120 hertz. Uh, and then um, they use the, control, uh, the controllers and then like the, uh, this, this controllers has like uh, sensors, they track your motion and then like they translate into like uh, the instrument tip motion. So you can open the uh, grip and then close the grip and then like you can intuitively control those uh, uh, instruments. So we do support wide variety of instruments ranging from like a needle driver to like uh, 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 scissors and then like uh, if you wanted to uh, use bezel sealer or like a stapler or like an energy instruments all by using this virtual reality kind of uh, uh, device. and. Uh, one thing that uh, uh, it's, it's uh, very uh, comfortable for the surgeons to do the surgery is that like when they sit at the console, they can adjust their ergonomic settings 
and they don't need to worry about like uh, how to tighten this headset or like you know so it supports uh, uh, people to easily get into the virtual reality and then exit that virtual reality and then look around like what's happening in the operating room and then like uh, we uh, we all know like we have been uh, uh, using the different uh, headsets sometimes like the ipd adjustment is not right or like you need to uh, uh, adjust a bit to clearly see the images but here the surgeon is is uh, performing the surgery and then they don't have enough time so they need to just sit there and then like they it, it should always be working and then um, when they put it, put their head in they don't need to like uh, how do i don, uh, donning and doffing they don't need to worry about all those things so they can comfortably adjust their uh, ergonomic settings put their head in and they can see the high quality uh, endoscope video and then these controllers are very intuitive to interact with so let me touch on the augmented reality like uh, what you are seeing on the top is a fluorescence imaging so if you uh, while you are in the uh, at console you can enable this uh, uh, augmented reality uh, fluorescence imaging mode uh, by enabling that you can clearly see like what uh, you cannot see through your naked eyes so that's that's the uh, 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 example of like augmented reality so the the 3d modeling what i'm showing there is an example of like mixed reality so like if you can uh, uh, the, the surgeon can ask for like uh, uh, pre op images uh, these are the 3d segmented uh, images you can use them uh, uh, during the surgery and then you can visualize like uh, all the clinical uh, uh, anatomical structures um, so these are the uh, few examples of like uh, 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 XR and then like how we are using the XR for surgery. So a lot of people uh, who are new to this DaVinci system or who haven't seen, they may be asking the question like, is this real? Is it being used or like uh, where it is being used? So just alone like uh, last year, uh, uh, almost like two million surgeries are uh, conducted uh, throughout the world like uh, using this DaVinci system, and uh, 1,200 systems are installed total like uh, 7500 systems are installed throughout the world and uh, around like 12 million procedures have been done so far and then you see that uh, this uh, uh, surgical system enables like uh, um, better outcomes and then like easy for the surgeons to use so you can see the adoption of this one is growing exponentially Along with, so what I shown uh, in the video is a multi-port DaVinci XI system where the surgeon uh, uh, puts an endoscope into one of the arm and then like there are other three arms for like instruments. Um, the, the one in the center is like DaVinci SP system which is like instead of like having multiple ports, you can have the endoscope and then all the instruments go through the single port. So uh, that's the, uh, one of the main benefits of like DaVinci SP system. So what you see on the, uh, the right is an endoluminal system. Uh, this allows you to uh, perform in uh, lung biopsies um, using this flexible catheter. One can navigate through this torturous like uh, lung uh, um, airways and then like get the biopsy from, uh, uh, from using this uh, particular system. So we touched on the intuitiveness and then like we talked about the uh, XR. So let me touch on the digital surgery. So, the digital surgery is uh, about like how do we enhance this uh, surgical outcomes and then like uh, with the uh, advancements in like robotic surgery and then like uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, AI, ML, so that uh, it enables the digital surgery. So intuitive uh, uh, digital from our, stop, uh, from our uh, start, uh, we are deeply collaborative by design focused on minimally invasive care. So you can use this digital surgery uh, uh, in the entire perioperative space, like during the pre-op planning, and then like intraoperative guidance, and then like, you know, uh, during the surgery as well. So let me show you the example of like Simnau here.
So uh, this is an example of like how we are using the virtual reality for like uh, uh, surge, uh, surgeon training. Uh, so far, like uh, uh, 3,600 uh, 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 simulators are installed all over the world, and uh, there are uh, 9,500 uh, uh, registered like SimNow users who are actively using, and they are spending like uh, uh, almost like uh, uh, 14. 9,000 surgeons have used uh, the SIM now in 2021, and then like 1.3 million exercises are completed by using this virtual reality uh, simulator. So as I said, like uh, um, XR is core to intuitive, and then like there are a lot of opportunities as this technology is fast evolving, and then the, I see the, uh, the way um, the XR evolving is it's a uh, next wave of computing. And then like there are a lot of opportunities. I think uh, this, this uh, video will uh, uh, demonstrate like uh, what's possible with this kind of technology as uh, uh, the digital surgery and then like uh, augmented reality robotics, they're all like evolving. So let me play this video. In the 20th century, global life expectancy more than doubled. In the future, intuitive's focus won't only be on extending how long we live, but also on extending how well we live. Da Vinci is ready. In the meantime, here's Dr. Singh. Good to see you again. If your biopsy is malignant, we'll take you straight to surgery. Lung adenocarcinoma confirmed. Confirming, Jack Sue's nodule is malignant. OR number nine is being prepped. I'd like three additions to my case cart, the fluorescent scope, imaging agents, and the microstapler. Confirmed. Initiate timeout. The patient is Jack Sue, who is having a right upper robotic assisted segmentectomy. Everyone ready? Project thoracic visualization. Singh has completed the segmentectomy on Jack Sue. Thank you, everyone. Great job. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Amara Singh. Thanks to Paul for having me speak. Any questions? So let me pause here and then like um, go to the previous uh, video. So uh, what I was showing there is that uh, uh, as this XR technology is fast evolving, and then like uh, this is this is one of the key uh, core uh, technology that enables like a lot of like opportunities in the surgical space, 
And then you can see that like in that video, uh, how virtual reality and then the augmented reality uh, is, uh, uh, is enabling like uh, the visualization and then like, you know, the navigation and also like uh, performing this uh, uh, digital surgery. Um, as this technology is available through like different modalities, like so through smartphones and then the wearables. So let me show you like what my team is working on and then like uh, how we are using this technology for like uh, providing in the uh, surgeon training. Uh, this is just an uh, uh, exploration that we are doing um, in the research lab. Oh. See if I can play this. of time I'll pause this video here and then you can see here like how we can use AR technology to provide like uh, surgical training and also like uh, you can provide the information in the moment of need uh, and also like uh, I wanted to point out that like uh, if you need more information so reach out to like intuitive.com and also like we are uh, actively hiring people who are interested uh, take a look at this website and then like uh, um, um, if you have any further questions so uh, I'm happy to answer. If anyone wants to ask any questions, just come up here and we have a few minutes. You know, I've seen a huge and very impressive emphasis here as in all the medical tech about preparing the surgeons. You know, I don't see anything about preparing the patients, which to me is essential. I actually work with patients, taking them step by step through their surgeries before the surgeries occur. And we have much less use of anesthesia, quicker recovery time. But it occurred to me that VR would be extraordinary. So is any work being done to allow patients to experience their own surgeries in VR before they actually have the surgery? No, thanks for uh, uh, your question. I think it's a uh, uh, great question. I, I see that like, okay, like VR is like uh, for patient education before they come into the surgery, what to expect and then like, you know, while they're in the uh, 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 surgery, uh, uh, what happened and then they can go back and then like visualize and then like, you know, there are a lot of opportunities with the VR, yeah. But is that being done now? I uh, think uh, uh, some of the things that what we do in the lab, we cannot talk about those things. I think uh, we can talk offline, like if you have further questions. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my question is about uh, the precision of the haptics that are involved with the with the simulator. Can you speak a little bit about you know are you doing tissue deformation? What you know what are they feeling when they are actually doing the surgery? Yeah, so we have a uh, um, uh, whole dedicated team like looking at like, okay, like uh, the, instead of like using a different system, like uh, 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 instead of the one that they are using in the surgery, so they're using the same console what they will be using during the surgery. And then like uh, we do have like a lot of work done like uh, the game engine and then like, you know, like uh, the tissue deformation and then like how do you make it to be more realistic? So there is a lot of work has been done like maybe uh, uh, if you come to like one of our office, so you, you'll be able to see the demo and then like, I think it's so close to that, like, okay, it's, it feels very real. I'm gonna take you up on that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, Colin Gallagher. I'm actually with uh, Haply Robotics, which is a haptics company. So I was uh, curious to hear, to expand upon that. Um, in terms of the kind of FDA approval and requirements, um, what are the challenges you face by integrating haptics, force feedback haptics into your solution? 
Yeah, so I'll touch on like uh, the FDA and in the regulations. Yes, definitely for this kind of like products, like a lot of like uh, uh, regulatory overhead is involved, which is uh, uh, we need to definitely go through those things. And then like uh, the haptics and then like, you know, uh, uh, how realistically like you can uh, uh, deliver that one. We do go through like a very thorough like testing and make sure that like, you know, like you do the HF testing and then like a, a whole lot of like testing and then submit this data to the FDA and then they come back and then ask a, a bunch of questions and then like uh, what you see is that like, okay, this uh, uh, product has been approved by the FDA. The, what I've showed is the fourth generation system and uh, 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 it has been evolving over a period of time and then like uh, force sensing that's something you asked for. Um, uh, we all uh, uh, know that like how important it is and Intuitu is uh, exploring in that space as well. So just really quickly is one of the biggest challenges, I guess, to getting FDA approval, is that the type of thing with uh, stability and this type of stuff in the, in the patient? The stability is something like we addressed like a long time back because like, as I said, like it is uh, uh, been um, the, the uh, product has evolved like, like last 25 years. Yeah, yeah. I think like you can get like sub millimeter accuracy and then like uh, it is being tuned such that like, you know, you can scale the motion in a way that like even though you do a gross motion with a scaling, then you can make like more dexterous and then like, you know, um, um, uh, 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 tasks. Thank you. Uh, he, he asked most of my questions, but uh, as, as XR technologies are evolving so rapidly, as you add new feature capability into the, the, the DaVinci or, or the machines that you're using for clinical purposes, uh, do you then have to get them recertified as, you know, class one, two or three medical devices for, for the purposes? And do you have to start all over again? Or is there a way to keep that process moving relatively quickly given FDA requirements? Yeah, I think I'm not uh, uh, the right person to answer that one. We have a regulatory team. They look at like what changes you have made and then like if you need to go back to the FDA or like or what is you know, the software update? Is it in like, you know, the functionality we changed or like the hardware changes? And so I think there is a lot of like, you know, they, the, they need to review and then like work closely with the FDA and then like different uh, regulatory bodies throughout the world to see like what needs to be submitted, what is not required to be submitted. Yeah. Thank you. All right, I'd like to thank Covind and um, we will be back here at 155. Thank you. Yeah.